Mofo RC here today. Uh, in the garage, we've got a whole bunch of parts. I'm going to do a kind of quick rundown on. These are just some of the new parts I've got. Um, some new things that are happening, kind of an update. Plus, this is going to be kind of a installation video or a helpful video for anyone purchasing the uh, the new servo plate. The new servo mount kit with the aluminum servo mount. Um, also for, let's see, and we'll go over a little bit about the steel transmission gear sets, uh, steel spur gears. We're also going to go over these brass pinion gears and the easiest way that I've found to install them, maybe talk a little bit about these motors. These are the Torque Beast 30s here. I also have the Torque Beast 50s. I might bring one of them out. Um, <clears throat> got some new black brass uh, <clears throat> hex extenders. These go right onto uh, your stock axle and they will extend it out an extra five millimeter wider per side. That'll give you a 10 millimeter total width. Plus I believe they're somewhere around 12 grams each. Uh, these are very similar to the t reel ones, but uh, these ones do come with brass barrel nuts. I think the t reel ones come with steel or aluminum or something like that. I kind of prefer the brass for everything. It's softer, it's also heavier. Uh, in my opinion, just um, you know, better for what we're doing, especially with these tiny threads. If you get one of those steel ones cross-threaded, you'll end up ruining the axle probably. Uh, we've also got these. This is the new, <coughs> I guess you could call it kind of the MoFo RC exclusive set here. Uh, these are like the double barrels or telescoping shocks or telescopic shocks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, one of the main differences between my set and some of the others is mine will also come with an extra set of smaller springs. And the smaller springs you can use on the shock and it will be like a uh, kind of a droop setup so you know normally they're pretty long when you use I don't have a full shock out here when you use a smaller spring it will sit about there and give you already that much droop now when you lift up the spring will no longer be touching the top when you articulate but uh, some of you guys like to run a full droop setup without any spring at all. Um, this would definitely prefer, be preferred over the full droop setup uh, as opposed to just using a shock with no spring. Uh, you do still get some spring action, uh, but at the same time, uh, you have a, a much better droop. You don't have to have such a severe shock angle uh, to try and get your vehicle lowered. Uh, this does also come with the three regular sets of springs, the very light pressure, um, kind of the medium or light pressure, and then the slightly firm or whatever pressure that you want to call that. It comes with all those as well, but it also comes with those, and it does come with brass um, shock balls, link balls, whatever you want to call them, instead of uh, steel or aluminum. The servo mount itself uh, the new servo mount is a lot like my old servo mounts. Here's a couple of the old ones. This was the three link servo mount I had been using. Uh, these are both printed out of uh, uh, carbon fiber uh, polycarbonate. They're very strong. They're also quite hard to print. And uh, there's two styles because those little tiny arms on there aren't quite strong enough to hold a four link setup uh, when compared to aluminum. So this one would be the four link plate. This one would be the three link plate. Um, I'll probably continue selling these just for the, the price factor. You know, these are only like 11 bucks or something like that shipped. However, I do have the new MoFo RC aluminum mount. Um, and one of the big differences between my mounts and everybody else's mounts is mine are adjustable. So you see how the servo upright posts are very far back on this mount at the moment. They are adjustable. You can move those forward two spots. You can even move them forward three spots or rearward one more spot if you only have one screw in the upright post. You can also mount the servo you know, to the back of the posts if you wanted or to the front of the post. So there's like a total of about 12 combinations you can do with this for adjustability. This does fit all of your aftermarket servos. Um, it'll fit the, uh, the NSDRC, it'll fit the reefs, it'll fit the Savox. And you can see this is one of the closest settings, how close that will get to the axle so your servo is not jammed 
way out here and running into stuff like some of the other mounts. So you can adjust that forwards, backwards, uh, these little upright posts. They are still 3D printed, but they are also replaceable very easily. Uh, and I will be including probably at least three, maybe four of these little upright posts when I sell them. I haven't seen anyone break one yet. Um, not from stress anyways. I've seen some people that have broken them, but usually they're jamming the giant screws that come with some of these servos uh, into the tiny little hole that's meant for a 1.4 millimeter screw. And they'll jam those big wood screws in them that come with the servos and they'll split in half. Uh, if you do want to jam one of those giant screws in there, uh, just take a drill bit and kind of drill that hole out bigger before you jam that giant screw in there. Otherwise, it definitely preferred that you just use the screws that comes with the mount. Uh, I also do include these little spacers so that if you have a servo with a large enough hole diameter, the screw might go through it. Just put the little spacer on the screw and then put it into the servo and into the mount. Uh, this will definitely fit Emacs servos as well. Um, I don't, I don't think it'll fit a stock servo. The stock servos are just so much thinner. I mean, there might be a way you could get it to fit a stock servo, but you can see there's quite a bit of play in there with the stock one. Um, if you absolutely love running stock servos for some reason, uh, you're probably not going to be contacting me for one of these servo plates anyways. Now, the older design that I will still be selling you can fit a stock servo on those because the plate has a little bit of flex and so once it's installed you can kind of squeeze it together and put a stock servo in there if you have to. <coughs> uh, this new mount will do three link via the screw right through the middle like that. Um, it will also do four link. Uh, those two posts each one of those are threaded in there so you can run a, uh, it, it does come with included screws if you want to run four link. Uh, they're the eight millimeter long screws. There's four of them. Two of those are for the servo. Two of those are for this mount if you want to run a four link setup. Uh, you would just put the link on the outside of the mount like that and screw it into the threaded plate. Now if you have any worries about that screw coming loose and you don't want to over tighten it and squish your shock ball, I would recommend just a tiny bit of Loctite on the screw before you put it in there. Screw it in there, let the Loctite dry before you use it, and you should be good to go. <clears throat> um, these also do clear the uh, the drive shafts. Both the 3-link and the 4-link will clear the drive shafts with plenty of extra room in there, so you don't have to worry about those rubbing on the drive shaft right there. You can see that. 3-link and 4-link both clear. Um, mount sits about as low as you can go with still having clearance back there and nothing sticks out of the top of the mount so it's completely flat across the top so you don't have to worry about your servo no matter how far back you put it you don't have to worry about it hitting those upper posts uh, also we have the new black brass skid plate uh, I had bought some black brass skid plates before sold out pretty quickly of them. I bought a, a little bit more of them this time, plus I had them go ahead and engrave my uh, my logo on there on the side there. Uh, I do still have the aluminum plates as well. I have a bunch of those. They're both pretty similar, minus the fact that one's made out of brass and coated black. The other one is uh, aluminum and coated black. Obviously the brass one is heavier. They both have a real slippery coating on them. Great for going over rocks. Uh, what else we got? I do have black brass uh, steering knuckles as well. I have those. I also have these little brass plus five or plus six or, you know, you see them all over the place and they all have something different. Some say plus four, some say plus five, some play plus seven. Uh, pretty sure they're probably all the same. I believe it's right around five to five and a half millimeters uh, extra uh, width you'll get on your rig using those. Here is the steel spur gear right here. Uh, it does have a little relief channel cut out in it so it's somewhat easier to get onto the shaft. They can be kind of tough to get onto the transmission shaft just because well they're steel, they're hard, they don't move around a lot like the plastic ones do. Here is the steel internal transmission gears and shafts. 
the combination of those two together plus one of these torque beast motors is just I mean lovely uh, there's not a whole lot of noise make sure you do put a little bit of grease on the inside here for this one for your internal transmission gears um, I think what I'll do next uh, let me see did I miss anything on this this is obviously shown here with the three link or the Y link set up on top you can use the four link uh, those posts move forward and backwards there is tiny screws in the package they are five millimeter long those ones those ones are for the upright posts they go in through the bottom into the upright post to secure that post don't over tighten any of these screws or you will strip them out they are going into plastic uh, the bottom holes are recessed so the screws don't stick out too far when you put them in there nothing to really catch on or anything look a little better yeah, whatever <coughs> the uh, the torque beast 30s the torque beast 50s these do have carbon brushes on the inside the torque beast 30 is a carbon slash copper alloy on the inside all of these motors do have much stronger magnets than the stock ones um, or any of the other motors I've tested really uh, the magnets these things are really strong uh, the armatures are built very well, the, the windings are wrapped very nice and tight, everything's really good on these motors. Um, the only issue I've had with them is the wires where they go onto here and they're soldered on. If you wiggle these back and forth enough, they will break off. So I've started putting a rubber band on here uh, just to, to keep the wires from moving around too much. Usually when people install them, if they're wiggling them around a lot, they can break them. Um, I also do and have been sending along with that motor an extra wire harness that is a little bit bigger than the original one and is pre tinned so if you do happen to break those off uh, you will have to know how to solder and solder the new wiring harness on the torque beast 50 does come with the newer v2 motor plate uh, which is a much easier to adjust motor plate to move the motor up and down for the 50 um, some of the other designs are kind of hard, they don't quite match up all the way, they don't quite mesh right. This one works really good. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I put these little brass gears on. I'm sorry for all the noise, we got a cement truck next door pouring some cement right now. Uh, I'm going to show you how to put these little brass gears on, or how I do it at least, the best way I've found to do it. For anyone that does purchase just a brass gear, if they've got a favorite motor and they want to make it you know, really awesome. Uh, these little brass gears will not slip like the stock plastic ones. Once you install these, uh, you will probably destroy your motor trying to get it off. So uh, if you really have a motor you like and it has a lot of power and sometimes you start to spin, uh, you can hear your motor spinning but nothing's going on, your wheels aren't moving, your little plastic stock gear is probably spinning on the inside on that shaft there. So these little brass gears, I'm going to show you how I install them. I'll put them in a vise. Uh, I use a, uh, a socket, this is a 3 16 if you can read that, 3 16 this is a Craftsman socket, but I imagine any 3 16 socket will fit most of the motors um, on the little back shaft, and let me grab, <coughs> let me grab a 52. So here is the 50. Uh, very similar to the 30. See that little nubbin on the back there? I put that socket right there on that little nubbin and it holds the, it supports the rear part of the shaft very well as I press these gears on. Same thing with the 30. It's got that little nubbin on the back. You can't really see it here, kind of maybe. Stick that right onto there. And then I'll line up the gear onto the shaft. I don't even try to shove these on first or anything. Let me open that vice up just a little. So you can kind of see how I got this sitting in here. I'm going to stick this brass gear on the front of the shaft very carefully without dropping it, hopefully. Then I'm going to hold it at the rear. Oh gosh, there it goes. All right, let me find that thing. This is not easy, by the way. Especially not when you're trying to do it on camera. Okay, I got that on there. I'm going to hold it from that socket at the back and now I'm going to turn it in slowly until I touch the socket 
and it's kind of sitting there. Now it's sitting there, it's kind of supported. I'm going to look at it, make sure it's perfectly straight and lined up, or at least, you know, as close to straight and lined up as I can get, and then I'm going to slowly push it on, just like so. With the 30s, uh, I've been pushing them on until, until that gear touches the top part, and then when I release it, it has just a tiny gap there. With the 50s, you cannot do that. Uh, when I press the gear onto the 50 motor, the shaft does not move inward, and if you push it on all the way to where it touches, it will stay touching. So be wary of that. Try not to shove them on all the way, or you may end up with a, a ruined motor. I've got a couple over here that I've got question marks on now uh, that I've pushed the gear on too far. And uh, once they're on too far, you can feel they don't quite turn as smooth anymore as they used to if you push them on too far. I managed to get the gear off of this one, but it destroyed the gear when I took it off. So uh, I hope that helps for anyone who has bought or is planning on buying the little pinion gear. If they want uh, a fully upgraded metal gear set, I do have those. Uh, I also have aluminum transmission cases. I even have the full bulletproof transmission kit which you can buy either as a kit or pre-assembled that I will put together myself and make sure all the gear mesh is good and lubed up and everything like that. And then you just have to install your motor. Uh, if you buy a motor at the same time, I will go ahead and install the motor at the same time uh, as well. I uh, hope all this helps. Hope this is useful somehow. If you have any other questions, feel free to message me. Um, you can message me. You can comment here and uh, usually I'll see them. Sometimes I miss the comments. You can also message me on Facebook at the Mofo RC. Um, you, know, you can go to my website, you can email me, uh, you could probably find my phone number if you had to call me or text me. Um, any other, you know, any other way you can think of to get a hold of me, if you need to get a hold of me, go ahead and get a hold of me. Um, these are sitting on my branch, these are the little boulder bars. Uh, these go on the frame rails of pretty much anything that has an SCX24 transmission, 24 transmission. Has little cutouts in the back. For the uh, the link screws so you take out the two center screws put this on put the two center screws back on and those holes right there will cover the link screws so they don't get hit on anything uh, and then they're not in the way these are nice little extra weights too thanks for watching I do have a whole lot more stuff coming up soon well let me show you some of these things here I do have a whole bunch of wheels um, in stock right now uh, these are the style three black. These are style three silver. Oh gosh, what else do I got? I got style two, I believe. This is style two black, is what I call them on the website. Here's a style one black. Style one silver. And style two silver. Uh, also have a whole bunch of new tires in. These are the uh, the little Proline Hyrax knockoff tires. These things are great. They're real soft and squishy. They're almost as soft as the RC four wheel drive ones. Um, maybe as soft, real close. But they have the Hyrax tread pattern, which has been a, a really great tread pattern for the one tenth scale, and uh, proving to be very good for the twenty fourth scale as well. Um, I do have regular sized aluminum shocks as well, both with and without the reservoirs. So, you know, anyone looking for regular sized shocks. Uh, here's the new style four wheel that will be on the website. Uh, I might have put it on there last night. If not, I'll probably put it on there today. Uh, they're very similar to some of the other wheels you've seen online that have the little rings on them like that. And I got a package from RC four wheel drive that I've been waiting for for like two months. I finally got it. I got a whole pile of tires I'm gonna be putting onto the website soon. So, you know, if you're looking for some tires, uh, oof, I got a lot of them coming on there real soon. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, hope you somewhat enjoyed this video. Hope it wasn't too boring. Hope you didn't fall asleep. Uh, if you have any other questions, like I said, get a hold of me. If you have any problems with your order, get a hold of me. Um, and have a great day.